Lazy inbounds pass, stolen away. Here comes Wakefield. Anna is going to lay it in. I was born with a best friend. We did pretty much everything together growing up, and a lot of that was basketball. We started playing together when I was five. Anna was four years old. Are you even taping it? Yes. We played together all the way through high school. Well, there's two Wakefields out there. They're sisters, Anna and Valerie. Anna's 20, Valerie's 23. And here's Valerie with the ball in her hands. Valerie Wakefield kicks it to her sister, Anna. Here's a three-pointer. That's a long drop by Anna Wakefield. I've been fortunate as a father that I've coached my daughters all the way through uh, elementary, junior high, and high school. So that was very special to have both Valerie and Anna. Our family was a very active family. We both coached and our kids both played for us. We won a couple state championships. Just the love and passion that you have and the connection that you have is special. And they gotta get rid of it. Four seconds to go, three seconds to go, see if they can get a shot off. Three-pointer, no! And the Damascus Christian Eagles win their first state title in school history. I, I look at our family, we're an uh, average American family. We were a family that was heavily engaged into basketball and camping, uh, loved outdoors, uh, just loved being with friends. My goal for her was to be able to play college ball, which she loved doing, graduate, and then be able to get married and carry on uh, a normal life. Anna and I were both captains on our college basketball team. I was a senior and she was a junior, and we were really looking forward to this one last season of playing together. They had dreamed of that day, that they were going to be a junior and senior. And it was their moment to shine that both of them were going to be starting together. And then to get that phone call, that changed it all. It was uh, 5.30 in the morning, dark, October day. Got up around a corner and all we could kind of see was a, a, I don't know, like a flicker of, of uh, flames in the middle of the road.
Anna's car was pretty mangled. Um, she wasn't moving, and um, she was pretty pinned in. Checked for a pulse with Anna, and I couldn't find one. <sighs> um, she was bleeding real bad out of her legs. And there just wasn't much that any of us could do on the scene. I just remember her curly hair you know, draped over her face and her not moving. A 20-year-old woman is in critical condition tonight after someone crossed the center line and crashed into her car head-on this morning. The other driver took off, and now police are trying to track down that year old Anna suspect. Wakefield was driving from her home in Clackamas County to basketball practice at Multnomah University. Deputies say the driver of the stolen SUV crossed the center line on Highway 212 and slammed head-on into Anna's 20 car. 20-year-old Anna Wakefield is in critical condition after a man crashed into her car and she took, took off. off. She was on now her way to basketball practice him. when she was hit head-on along Highway 212 just west of Damascus. On that morning, I had gotten a text that said there was a big accident on Highway 212. For a moment, it crossed my mind, oh, my kids go down that road, but then I kind of shoved that thought back. I was on my way to uh, work like a normal school day, and I remember thinking that it must be a pretty serious accident for the highway to be shut down. And I remember praying for the family, praying that however, bad the accident was that uh, the family would be okay, but not knowing that it was my family. What you saw in that bed was a kid broken and bloodied and beat up and unrecognizable. All I could do was lay my head on her chest and I just tried to will every ounce of strength that I had into her. I knew at that point that she was just fighting for her life. I remember Anna had asked me to take her out for ice cream. And I remember that I was too busy, I was too tired. And I told her that we'd take a rain check for it and that we'd make it up on another day. And then two days later, she was in that hit and run accident. And I remember being in the hospital. I remember. I remember being in that hospital, wishing that I had one more chance. Well, that day was one of the most difficult of my entire life. Should I play? Should I stay here with Anna? I was like, she would 100% want me to play in that game tonight. There were several times playing that night that I like saw her on the court. 
Everything in me wanted to be with her. But also, I wanted to make her proud. I think the darkest moment in the hospital was when that doctor came out and told my daughter and myself to get used to it, this is the way your daughter would be. I went down to the cafeteria to get a cup of coffee and I ran into another couple. And the father, with tears in his eyes, told me that they were making a decision whether to harvest their son's organs or not because his son had just passed away. And I remember, I remember walking away as a father, thinking that my daughter still had a chance. After I woke up in the hospital, I remember one of the first things that I did. I laid in the hospital bed and I reached up and felt that my head was shaved all of it. all of my beauty. Where was my hair? Could I ever be beautiful again? cheating. Yes. <laughs> Three, now go for it, okay? I'm waiting for it, go for it. You gotta take, take it down. I'm not taking it down. There you go. Take it down. It. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Good job, girl. Yeah, he's annoying, isn't he? I know I'm annoying. Work a lot. Open your mouth. I'm not gonna do it for you. Okay? There you go. Nice job. Whoa, that was Good nice. Good job, Anna. Nice job, sweetie. In our own lives, we're all prepared for different seasons. Give it back to me. Give it, give it to Dad. I look at myself as a coach for almost 30 years that I had no idea that God was preparing me to come alongside to be the driving force behind her to help in her recovery. You rest, okay? At that time, we had decided, our family, that we weren't going to quit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Moses. Happy birthday to you. Good. Good. You heard a little bit of voice in there, huh? Let's try it one last time. Uh, Good job, Let's Anna. leave it there. Every day starting at 7 a.m. till 4 to 4.30 every night, we structured a program uh, six days a week of boot camp, uh, occupational, speech, uh, physical therapy. And when I say it was boot camp, it was torture. Tears coming down her face because it hurts so bad. She can't do it because the brain can't make a connection to a paralyzed left side. It's okay. I know it's gonna hurt, but stand tall. 
Yes, Anna. I've had to learn everything from the stage of a baby. Learning how to walk, learn how to count, how to talk. Okay, kick it all the way out. Yes! Kick it all the way out. Yes! Pay attention to that left leg. Kick it all the way out. I had to move things with my left hand, but my left hand couldn't do it by itself, so I would literally pick them up and then move my hand over with my right hand. Oh, we almost are, are connected there. My brain doesn't know how my body moves, so it'll say, touch your head, and I would be like, I'm touching my head with my left arm. My brain doesn't know what it's doing. No. Okay. How about, man, how about she's your really sister, you? Yeah, there you go. Like, Wait a second. We have oh, man. <laughs> As a coach, you challenge your athletes to push, to excel, to be the best they, they, they can be. And with Anna, I knew we had to push even beyond what she thought she could do. There you go. Thank you for praying for me. It has meant so much and helped me so much emotionally and physically. Please continue in your prayers and give many thanks to God that I'm alive and functioning and that I get to see my family and friends daily. When she came home from the hospital, she was in a wheelchair. We would get her to stand up and lean on the walker, take one or two steps, and then she would sit back down. And then pretty soon we'd work on three or four steps, and then five or six steps with the walker. And then ultimately we got her to the cane. Balance and slow. Balance and slow. Stand. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grandpa. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. That was special. bless me with the ability to walk now and um, I get to see his beautiful creation with beautiful people in my life.
the first time I got to go back to basketball practice, it just made me so happy because it was the life I had before. And just to know I could be accepted and be normal. How those shoes feel? So good. Yeah. <laughs> look good. So you look yes, good. Yes, they look good. They look good. I've been missing seeing you come through those doors, so. Was just huge in helping me to remember why I should continue fighting. I am on a weight field and I have been training for basketball just so I could shoot this shot again. You made your first shot, girl. Anna was determined to make a three-pointer. She's always had such a competitive drive. Four, five. I had to do six, lots of muscle workouts seven. for my legs so I could walk that way. So I want you to work on your speed. Go a little faster. Toes forward. Uh-uh. Toes forward. That's it. And then train my left hand how to even grab the basketball so I could shoot it. She probably missed a hundred three-pointers before she made one. Let's go! We stayed there all night until she finally made her three-pointer just as she had said that she was going to. I just had the best day of physical therapy ever. <laughs> so much. I got to do basketball things. Like, I got to dribble and pass and shoot. And I got to move side to side and bend my legs and do all of it, like, in full motion. Everything. <laughs> I'm so excited. Now another story that's new at 11. She's a living, breathing miracle. Four months ago, a head-on crash nearly killed her. And tonight, Anna Wakefield is back on the basketball court with her sister and her team. Seeing both Val and Anna back on the court was really a miracle. That gym was probably the fullest I've ever seen it before. I was very excited to shoot it because as a shooter for basketball, when are you not excited to shoot it? But I was also very nervous because I saw how many people there were in the audience and I was like, oh no, I didn't warm up if I missed this. I'm going to walk of shame, and I'm never going to want to come back to basketball again. Both our team and the other team just rallied around her and cheered. It was just so special to be able to celebrate with her in that moment um, and to be able to uh, kind of wrap things up and um, share that final memory together. What are you thinking? What are you feeling when she nails that uh, free throw shot? <laughs> I never doubted it. Uh, Otto was always a good shooter. I never doubted, you know, her drive to come back to be that player that she was. 
uh, it's still a drive and a dream of hers, and for her to be able to be back out in the court and be able to do that, amazing, and I never doubted it. Senior night at Multnomah University. Lions fans packed the gym for the game of the season. This is her sister Valerie Wakefield's last home game, but more importantly, it's the sister's last chance to play together. All these things were taking place that no one gave a chance for. She's doing things that nobody thought was possible. To see her smiling and laughing in a way that she hadn't before, it was really nice to see that, and it made me really happy to see her that happy again. Now tonight, Anna's friends, families, and supporters wore this t-shirt saying, fight like Anna. It's a night she and her family will never forget. It was hard for me, I think, because I know all that she used to do when she was on that basketball court. Wakefield drives and scores and Damascus Christian up 37 to 36. And to see her reduce to that point where it was such a big deal for her to even get on the basketball court was really hard. You know, Anna was a walking miracle, but she will never be who she was before. Investigators say he is this man, 20-year-old Sequoia Stork. On Friday, deputies arrested Stork nine months after the crash. He faces multiple charges, including assault and driving under the influence. When I was told in the hospital that a man had hit me and just walked away, I didn't know how to feel. Why? How could they do this? It was an emotional sentencing in Clackamas County Court today. Sequoia Stork was in tears as Anna Wakefield told him how his choices in October of 2017 have impacted her life. I was just coming to grips with the reality that life was changed, reality is different, that I'm not the same person anymore. It would have been easier for me if God would have just taken my life. I would have just been up in heaven in the arms of my father. Some of the dreams that died the day of the crash was playing basketball. I'd worked really, really hard, came up from JV to be the varsity team captain. 
but I lost all of that. And now it's just a dream that I had to lose. So it's something I'll never achieve now. My boyfriend and I had been talking and planning about getting married and all of that fell through the cracks. Instead of going through my Pinterest and looking at wedding cakes and wedding gowns, now my best friends are getting engaged and married. I have been stripped down to nothing and lost everything. I know God has a purpose for me. It's not my will, but your will be done. Sequoia took basketball from me, my boyfriend from me, life from me. After praying for a year straight and continually asking for that forgiveness, I told Sequoia that I've made mistakes and God has forgiven me. I have forgiven the man who hit me and given him a second chance. I want him to have a better life. A local young woman says she forgives the driver who left her for dead and forever changed her life. We are imperfect people. I want you to know that I have forgiven I will carry the scars of my mistake every day for the rest of my life. But if you ever need the care and support of a faithful friend, I will always be there, ready to listen. What do you make of, of, of her spirit and her ability to forgive this man? <sighs> Honest spirit is second to none. I mean... I don't know if I could have forgiven him, but she's a loving person. You know, that day, I watched two lives change. Not just Anna's, but Sequoia's as well. Just before his sentencing, Stork addressed the courtroom. I just want to say I'm ashamed. Sorry. I pray for Anna every day. I think it's maybe, you know, just short of a miracle that I really feel like the whole thing did bring our family together. Every moment that I do get with her feels like a gift. But it's also just a great reminder in every relationship to love to the fullest and um, never to take any of it for granted. I was fortunate as a father because five months later I was able to take her on that Terry Queen date. There are some things that you always cherish. And if I can ever be an encouragement to any father, you make time for what's most important. I never thought that I would have that opportunity again. 
I will always cherish that. That is a moment that is ingrained in my mind till the day I die. Anna is an inspiration because every day she gets up and figures out a way to make herself better. She's never content to just settle in where she's at. And I told her one night she's my hero and she's like, why? <laughs> Which if anyone has followed her story, they know why. there's any time where you think you're having a bad day, you could uh, take a look at Anna and know the struggles that she goes through and has gone through. And uh, it has to make you stronger. She's always smiling. She's always working. She always strives to do the best thing. That's why she's inspiring me. Anna is a miracle. Every day she fought back hard. She had a traumatic brain injury and now she's back. If that's not beating the odds and being a miracle, I don't know what is. There will never be a kid that works like Anna. There are no words to describe uh, the pain and the agony and the torture that she's had to endure for all this time. When I look at my daughter, she's an example, not just to me as a father, but to so many other people that you keep going, you keep fighting, you don't quit. She has fought hard. She's doing things that nobody thought was possible.